Hi, everybody. I'm Ambika, and I'm so happy you came to join me to learn about how to use Zoom. It's an incredible tool and something that all of us can use. And just the fact that you got here is already showing that you're way ahead of the pack, and you can eventually use this as a tool, not just as a way to stay connected with your friends and family, but to really upscale your business into the new normal of what's going on in the world right now. So thanks for being here. Everybody's got their mic unmuted. So the first thing I want to teach you is just about your screen. So uh, the way that I get my groups and organizations to communicate on Zoom is by giving me a thumbs up if they understand what I'm talking about or something like this, or if you wanna do a thumbs down, I'm like, no, I didn't get that. Or Paula, you're being fancy. Um, Paula's using a thumbs up on her screen. So uh, just by a show of hands, how many people are on some form of computer that are here with me live? On a computer, not, and then who's on a phone? No, oh, you're on a phone. Okay, so phone is going to be different and I won't be teaching all the phone commands. Uh, tonight, but just know the first thing that I want everybody to understand about Zoom is that anything you want to learn about Zoom, you can ask Google, just type in a sentence and put the word Zoom and you will get a video that Zoom made. Zoom is incredible in their FAQ, meaning the facts that they give to you and the frequently asked questions. And just by putting the word Zoom after a question in Google, you're going to end up with videos from them. And the nice thing is their videos generally only last about three minutes. So they're really clever and keyed in to the fact that that's our attention span. So that's really cool. So the first thing right now, um, I'm watching us in what's called gallery view, but now I can move it speaker view. So those of you who are watching the replay, you're now seeing a bigger picture of me. And uh, the way that we do that, everybody, is up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you should see a choice of either speaker view or gallery view. And if you click on that, it will change to whomever is speaking if you're in speaker view and make them bigger. For those of you who are interested in using Zoom as a tool for maybe making teaching or learning yeah. videos, when you use it on your own uh, and you're recording, it's going to behave just a little bit differently than if you're in a group situation. And that might take a little bit of experimentation. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you is just if you go to gallery view so that you're seeing the different rectangles of us, I call it the Hollywood squares view. That's because I'm that old. Um, <laughs> that if you put your cursor over top of your block, you'll see two blue areas. Uh, one will be either mute or unmute and that will cut your microphone. There are numerous ways to cut your microphone, but that's one of the quickest and easiest. And then tap on the three dots and you'll see a drop down menu. This will give you options for pinning a video, meaning you can pin a particular person, like say you're in a group situation and you are um, wanting to keep your eye on a particular person in that group but you're not wanting to watch in speaker view, or maybe you are in speaker view, but you still want to keep their block visible, you can pin that one video. You have the option to pin one or uh, spotlight one. Um, if you are wanting to record, which I'm the one recording tonight, but say you wanted to record, you could request to the host, whoever started the, the Zoom session, to record. Now, uh, I'm using a pro account. In a free account, you can record, uh, but the other person cannot. S but in a pro account, if I start it from my pro account and you have a free account, I can give you permission and we can both record. This is really nice for clients. And if for some reason you want to use the video for something and the other people want to use it for something else. Um, I'll stop every once in a while to ask you if you have any questions. Uh, 
But at this point, does anybody have a question about anything I've covered so far? It's all making sense. All right, excellent. Um, so then uh, down at the bottom of your screen is a toolbar. If it's not showing up, take your cursor and move it to the bottom of your screen. Here we've got a bunch of controls. The first one to the left-hand side is your microphone. And if you tap on your mic, you'll mute it. When you tap on it again or click on it again, it will unmute it. That's another quick and easy way to do it. Next to the microphone is an up arrow. Go ahead and click on that and you'll see some different choices there. Say you're meeting somebody in a Zoom and it's their very first time and they're not even sure how to get the audio to work. This happens a lot in the very beginning when somebody's new to Zoom and hasn't figured out that they have to give their video camera and their microphone and speakers permission with the application because it is an application. Uh, so here is where you can choose. Say you've got more than one mic hooked up or more than one camera. You can do that in Zoom. So I could hook up a secondary camera and switch back and forth while I'm talking to all of you. Say I want to show you something with my hands. For instance, uh, about a month ago, I taught the Girl Scouts some origami and helped them have a meeting on Zoom because they were at a loss. That was right when the whole... Uh, COVID thing began and they didn't know what they were going to do or how they were going to meet. And so I said, hey, I'll host a Zoom meeting and I was supposed to teach you origami anyway. So you all can have your meeting in my Zoom room and then I'll teach you origami and I'll just take off and you can have the rest of your meeting. And they were so grateful. So this is something really nice that we can do with Zoom is offer it to not-for-profit organizations and help them out. So you can hook up more than one camera. You could hook up more than one microphone. I don't know why you'd want to, but maybe you would. And this is where you can test all your sound. Just to the right of that is a little video camera image. And next to that is an up arrow. Here is where we can create video settings and something we'll come back to later, which is virtual backgrounds. Next, uh, you'll see um, participants and you should be able to click on that and see some different options like raising your hand or uh, and all the different people who are here live with us. The person who's in control or whoever started the Zoom meeting, we'll call it, has a little bit more control in that participant area. If I was to make one of you a co-host, you would automatically get the same controls that I have. Moving to the right is a choice called chat. Go ahead and click on that and that should pop open a white screen to your right. And I'd like for you to type hi or hello in there, so I know you found it. Excellent, wonderful. You all are becoming Jedi very quick. I'm proud of you. All right, now, when you're in a Zoom meeting with a bunch of people, and I actually go to a Zoom meeting that has over 3,000 people in it, can you imagine? It's intense and that's pages and pages of people. Uh, I might want to send a private message to somebody. So what I'd like you to do is in that chat window where it says everyone, click on the arrow and find, find me in the list. Find Ambika in the list and send me a secret private message. <laughs> and then what I can do is when I see a message come in, if I click on your highlighted name, it will automatically give me the opportunity to write back to you. And that's what I'm doing right now. You, you all are definitely becoming Jedi fast. I'm going to have to get you lightsabers. All right, Doug is 
definitely using a cyber background. We'll get to that. <laughs> That's something that people always want to learn from me. Okay, so you've all figured out the secret message and then the, the key thing is, if you send a secret message or you mean to send to everyone, just let's just plant it in our brains and the mind right now that we make sure whom we're writing to in the chat window. <laughs> if you want to be safe, use another chat app on the side. <laughs> <laughs> to pass notes to your friends. I don't know about you, but when I was in junior high, I loved passing notes and this is the equivalent of it. it. It makes it really, really good. Now, if you're running a webinar or something, that gives you even different controls and then you can actually have people raise their hands or have a separate person take all the questions and feed them to the hosts. So that's, that's a whole different way to go. Um, and uh, any questions at this point? You can, you're more than welcome. Go ahead and unmute your own mic, Paula, and ask me your question. Okay, um, I'm actually out of order, but the participants, you said under participants, there's a place where we could raise our hand, did you say? Uh, it, there could be. Okay. But I, it's, it's not. Oh, now I do. Now I do. I didn't see it before. Okay, okay. Okay, now I see it. Okay. Okay, that, and uh, that could or maybe not be there. But um, it's it's above the chat. It's above, above the, the chat, chat not participants. It depends on how the chat is popping out. Okay. And uh, how you're doing it, because um, the the chat can uh, it it also matters sometimes with what view you are in. Yeah. So okay. uh, uh, and that that can be disabled or enabled. Um, then. Uh, if you were recording, you should see a recording button, but you, you can try pressing it and uh, it won't do anything because I didn't give you permission. And, uh, but if you were recording, you also have a pause button, which is kind of nice. Especially, it's nice to have that pause button. Say you use Zoom just all by yourself and you want to make some kind of video to teach people something or to send a message and maybe you want to pause it to get something on your screen or off your screen if you're screen sharing or switch cameras, it, it really saves time for editing later. Because um, when we're making things on video, it's really nice to get it in a one take as much as possible. The less editing, the better. Editing can be really tedious and consuming. Um, nothing is out of order, everything is fine. Um, over to the right of your recording buttons, you should see an applause button. And if you click it, uh, it, will, it will bring it up and you should see a thumbs up button. And then uh, under more this evening, what we've got are breakout rooms. I'm not making breakout rooms, but say you were with a large group of people and you wanted to put them out into breakout rooms to have discussions or do a group process, you can do that. Now, to be able to do it specifically and place certain people together is something that has to happen before the meeting is uh, live. Or what will happen is the breakout rooms will be random just by how many or uh, are in the main group. How many people can fit on a single Zoom screen? The answer is 50. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. In a pro account, which is the first tier up from free account, you can have up to 100 in a meeting that is recordable and goes longer than uh, at 40 minutes. I, I don't know if they use the 40 minute. Oh, just so you know, I'm not getting paid by zoom. <laughs> I don't have any affiliation with them other than using their tool. It's just something because I've been leading so many zoom meetings. People have asked me to do this. Um, uh, now you pretty much are, are a Jedi warrior here with zoom. Uh, if you want to get rid of the chat window, just 
click on chat again. Um, what will happen is if you have the chat area shut down, then if a message comes in, it, it will read across your screen and you'll be aware like, oh, okay, I need to go over and um, open up the chat and see what's going on. Uh, like, uh, and if anybody needs to leave early, that's more than, that's fine. And uh, I just appreciate you being here. But at this point, I'd like to uh, ask you if you have any more questions. Before, I do. Yeah, yeah, sure. Gail, um, okay, when I was playing with the background screens, like the background was all kind of staticky and then my face never came up. Okay, I'll explain that. And while we're at it, Gail is using somebody else's computer. So let's talk about changing our names. Ah, that would be great. Yeah, so take your cursor and slide it up to the three blue dots in your area, in your rectangle. Click on that and then the third choice down should be rename. So I'm just going to rename myself Ambika. So go ahead and rename yourself. And this will not affect the long term of the Zoom account. So the fact that Gail is using Doug's computer, it will only change it for this meeting. The next time Doug logs in, it will revert back to Doug Myers. So if you wanna change your name for a particular meeting, don't worry about it. You have that option when you're logging into Zoom if you're using the app whether it's on a computer or on your phone, when you first log in, it will have the name that you have set up with your account. But then if you want to change it for some reason, for instance, I'm an astrologer. So sometimes I go to meetings and I write Ambika Astrologer. And sometimes I go to meetings and I'm talking about holistic health or meditation. So, uh, Probably for that, I'd put Jedi. Um, but, uh, you know, you could put a title, you could put your name. Just know that at a certain point, there's not enough space for it to read on the screen. <laughs> Excellent, Gail. So proud of you. I know, right? You're, yeah. So let's talk about virtual backgrounds since Gail wanted to learn about that. Now, some uh, equipment, some hardware won't allow you to do it, so I apologize up front for this. Uh, the place we find the virtual backgrounds is in the up arrow just to the right of the video camera on the lower bar. So slide your cursor to the lower bar, see the microphone, the up arrow next to that, the video that would probably say stop video and click on the up arrow and then go to choose virtual background. Now in virtual background you have a choice of some stock images and you can load images in here. You, the little plus sign to the upper right hand side is where you can add images. You can add JPEGs or PNGs in there. And uh, then below that, you can see mirror my video, which will change the image to be a mirror. And you can see I have a green screen. Now, d if you don't have a green screen, it's probably not great to tell it that you have a green screen, but because this is what will happen. So I don't have a green screen, but even though I don't have a green screen, for some reason I luck out and the virtual backgrounds work for me. Now they do look a little wavy and wonky and yes, I can disappear into the backgrounds, but some people like it and some people don't. So you, a screen came up on mine that says computer doesn't meet requirements. There you go. So unfortunately yours does not. Oh, that was my favorite thing. But uh, I've loaded a bunch in, um, I'm part of a Toastmasters club, so sometimes I use this for the yeah, background. Mine said the same thing. Uh, are you on Max? Yeah. That's why, yeah, sorry about that. Um, the Mac, for some reason, doesn't support it, and I don't know why. And it's most disappointing. Oh, my goodness. Well, you but look beautiful with yours. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and you can get green screens. Uh, 
you can get a type of green screen that slips over the back of your chair and you can also get green screens that use stands kind of like uh, backdrop, you know, and create a backdrop. Um, green screens do not have to be green. They can be white, they can be black, they can be blue, or they can be green. Now, the key is if you're using a green screen, don't wear a green shirt because that will pick up as part of the green screen. So the ones that are two-sided that are blue on one side and green on the other are made for that. In case you want to wear a green shirt, you use the blue side. If you want to wear more blue, you wear you, you use you the green right? side. Oh, um, that looks cool. So I think why mine works is because I have a lot of backlighting that comes from the, uh, the sliders behind me. You can see the sliders. Uh, in the daytime, I can sometimes get away with saying I have a green screen because the light's so intense behind me that part of the room picks up the virtual background and I stay clear like I am here. More questions, please. Is it better to be backlit? Never. No? Never, ever, ever. So, um, back, yes, but I have light beaming in from above in front of me. Ah. Yeah. So it's really important, especially if you're speaking to a client or addressing a group that you have light coming from in front of you. If you have some backlight, it's okay. Um, let me just grab a little loop light. This is a little loop light and it's it actually opens up like this and it's rechargeable and it has three settings so if I place it here it gives even more light than I need because I have a setup light wise where I am that I it's built into the ceiling I just have the right kind of LED light coming from there. But this is a really handy tool, say, if you're in another location or it's really dark and you want to throw some light on your face and it's very inexpensive. There's different kinds that can clip. This one I use with my cell phone all the time and I, I love it. It's an excellent, excellent tool. So uh, yes, Paula, go ahead and unmute yourself, excellent. So does that clips, I could see that clipping to the top of my laptop. It would clip mm -hmm. to anything, I guess. So here's my cell phone and I uh, clip it there and turn it on. And oh, yeah. it's got three settings. Yeah. And so they where also you make, they make holsters and um, you can find so many different things with uh, things that convert from a selfie stick to a tripod and hold a cell phone and then you can clip that. This is how a lot of people are making productions. You know, you don't have to get fancy with equipment. That's what's really wonderful is that you can easily create live videos and archivable videos with just your cell phone. Although with Zoom, I do recommend working from some kind of computer because you'll have a little bit more technology on your side and a little bit more ability uh, as far as what you can do. Plus you'll be able to see yourself on a bigger screen. What else, what else can I answer for? So when I was, uh, I was in um, a group today and some people had pictures of themselves up. Mm-hmm. So is that just you would load that into the into the so atmosphere? like this like that oh do you see my picture oh yes right like that okay so that's something that you do in your Zoom account so you you so just, just load like that. when you make a Facebook profile you load a profile picture uh -huh. in your Zoom account online you would put a photograph okay. And you can change that whenever you want. Okay. What, what else? These are great questions. If I had a green screen behind me, would I be able to have the background then? Are you using a Mac or a PC? 
What is this down to? KC. Yes, you should be able to. Cool. Yeah, there's different ones. You can find them on Amazon. Um, just depends how big and how fancy. I do recommend a two-sided one. Some people are using the black and white because they're not using virtual. Uh, for the virtual backgrounds, the green screen with the blue side uh, is what I would recommend. That's how they make VR movies with green screens. It's yeah. just you don't want to wear green against it or you'll disappear. That could be interesting. <laughs> just your head would be there, right? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, green screen technology can be a little bit funny, but you should be able to. What other questions can I answer for you? I feel like we've covered pretty much everything. So, oh, there is one more bit. Go ahead and pop the chat open. And you should see three dots at the lower right-hand side of the chat. And if you click on that, you'll have the opportunity to save the chat. So say you're in a, a group situation where there are lots of bits of information being shared in the chat and you don't have time to copy and paste or read the whole thing. You can uh, tell the Zoom chat, the Zoom meeting through those three dots at the lower right hand side that you would like to save the chat and after the meeting, it will download into your computer in the same kind of text uh, that a notepad note would be in. So that's very com convenient as well. Does anybody else have any other questions? No? Okay. I'm thanking you so much for coming and I look forward to teaching you more in the future. Thank you, Amrika. Thank you. Other questions? No? Okay. I'm thanking you so much for coming and I look forward to teaching you more in the future. Thank you, Amrika.